Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about DroneKit. We're going to see first what it is and then why it's so powerful. So what is DroneKit? Essentially, it provides a list of Mavlink empowered functions. So with DroneKit, we can capitalize on the Mavlink protocol by commanding the drone in Python. And what this essentially allows us to do is treat our drone like it's an API. So we get to capitalize on the 700,000 lines of code in Ardupilot's code base like it's a giant API. So in one line of code, for example, we could tell the drone to move to a particular waypoint. So here's an example. In four lines of code in DroneKit, we could tell the drone to take off into the air, fly to a specified waypoint, and then land all on four lines of code. We don't have to deal with any of the low-level Mavlink creations of the messages. We don't even have to know anything about Mavlink. And we don't have to know anything about Arterpilot. All we need to know is DroneKit and the high-level functions like take off into the air and move to this waypoint function and the land function, and we're good to go. We don't have to know an immense knowledge of how our Mavlink messages are getting sent and interpreted by Ardupilot, while it's helpful, it's not required. So this drastically lowers the barrier of entry. So these are the four lines of code that it would take to tell the drone to take off into the air, go to a specified waypoint, and then land. So with this, you can start to see the power of DroneKit, because all of this is intuitive, human-readable language, and it's... Uh, easily understandable how it affects our drone. But it's all empowered by Mavlink. To drive the point home, I'm going to use a computer analogy. So at the inception of computers, there was no screen or anything. No one was worried about how to turn computers into some spider solitaire machine. Everyone was focused in on the hardware. So with the creation of the screen, we get more abstraction. We get to intuitively interact with our computer hardware without having to know everything about the underlying details. And then on top of that, we might get different computer languages that are more abstracted than others. So the creation of things like Java. Now we don't even have to worry about stack and heap space. Now we can just code what we want to code and abstract all of the underlying things away from us, which allows us to focus on the cool things like spider solitaire and so, you know, in the beginning, everyone had to focus on hardware as abstraction started to increase. Eventually, we got a firmware layer of computers that could interact with the hardware based off of human-readable code. And then with the creation of a user space that could access the firmware in an abstracted manner, that is, in a way where they didn't have to completely understand what the firmware was doing, they could just make simple calls to the firmware layer, which would then do the hardware communication for them, you get some very unique applications that no one in the 50s and 60s would have thought the computers were getting applied with. So you get things like electronic mail, or text processors with thousands of different text styles, or an ability to fill out your taxes online, or watch rhinos eat snow cones, so today you can see kind of a distinction here. You can have a couple, you can have many different types of engineers. You can have firmware engineers, you can have hardware engineers, you can have software developers. Well, the same can be seen with the drone progression of technology. So at first we had this clunky quadcopter that couldn't fly at all, and then hardware kept developing, and now we have this cool quadcopter that can auto-level itself. And then we began to get these open source tools that could operate as firmware to control the hardware like Ardupilot and PX4. But we still don't have this high level interface into controlling the drones. We have these large code bases, but we don't have an abstracted method to interact with our drone that utilizes Ardupilot and PX4 to control the drone. Well, enter DroneKit. DroneKit provides us with the high-level interface that lets us control our drone in very 
abstracted ways where we don't even have to worry about the firmware or the hardware. So I think as abstraction keeps increasing, just like computers, we're going to see some forking of specified engineering fields in the drone space. So I, I bet we're going to have exclusively hardware engineers and exclusively firmware engineers. And then I think with the advent of DroneKit and other things that are bound to come out like it, we're going to have some application engineers. So what could those possibly be? Well, just throwing out some examples, you might have a food delivery application where some customer places a food request and you input their address and that gets transferred to a GPS waypoint all in Python. And then your Python drone kit script can automatically create a route that the drone takes to deliver the food and, and then return back to where it launched from. That could easily be done in drone kit. Same for package delivery. Let's say you had a security or surveillance system. You wanted to be able to fly your drone in predetermined paths with consistency. Well, you could create a drone kit script that could save the missions that you wanted the drone to fly. And whenever called upon, the drone would fly those missions the same way every single time. So you could say, drone, every 30 minutes, fly this route A over here. And then after you fly route A, go fly route B and record video for every mission so that I can keep tabs on these areas of interest. Another application may be inter-drone communication. So as the airspace starts to get more and more crowded with drones, we're going to need a method for communicating drone to drone so they can keep tabs of each other and not run into each other. And DroneKit could be a way to do that. So I hope you're starting to see some of the high-level applications that DroneKit can be applied to. So as legislation catches up with the technology, things like DroneKit are going to be able to be used for companies to create their high-level applications to use their drones in the commercial space.